be here at Wood Street College and I want to greet Superintendent Wallace, the ministers and their wives and Mother Wallace, fellas, precious saints of God, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't think to sit down by the way, I'm going to read the book. <laughs> if you go down with me, just another minute or so. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read it this morning. We're going to read it again. Colossians chapter 3. And I want to highlight verse 5. Bless the name of God. If you found it, say amen. 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 And the King James Version reads, Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And the New King James Version reads, and it's paused right there, it says, therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, now, passion was one of the theme words I was given today about purpose and passion. So the New King James Version talks about passion, and it talks about the one outside of Christ, passion. Evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. And just to make sure you're clear, the AIB says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. And if we step back into verse 2, it says, set your affection on things above, not things on the earth. And the last scripture that I want to highlight in my main text is in Exodus chapter 20. You can turn there real quickly. And it reads, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm going to read that again. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I want you to tell somebody, if you want to be blessed, drop the idols. On the other side, behind you, in front of you. That's right, amen. Lord God, we just, I'm going to pray for you now. God, I just give you the thanks and the honor. I ask for right now, the Holy Spirit, that you'll work with me in delivering this message. It's a hard message, Father. You have me to eat it and allow it to change me. I know it can change people. Because, Father, you want to see that your church life and well and healthy and blessed and progressing to be able to fit in with the time, to be able to be relevant and to be effective and to let, to know, to let the community know that we're here and let the world know that you are still alive. Exhaustive concordance. The 
big book of dictionary, the word idol, idol, idol with apostrophe F, idolatry, idolatry was mentioned 245 times. I know because I counted. Idolatry can be viewed as man's attempt to go it alone. And I thought, that's quite an arrogant thought, and it comes from a carnal mind that denies the omnipresence of our living God. Because the power of God, even though he's the visible God, he, he, he reveals himself in his creation. We cannot go it alone. We cannot do it without him. This world is just coming to being. I didn't come from monkey, you didn't come from monkey. God took the time out to create us. He is the omnipresent, powerful, creative, wonderful creator. And we ought to live as if we know who he is. Amen. Idolatry was all around in biblical times and it's all around us now. And while it's easy to look at people that physically bow down and worship idols and graven images that are made of metal and, and wood, and we see them pouring milk on them, and we see them putting flowers and leaving food for them. While it's easy to look at them and say, oh, easy, idol worship, but that's wrong. Well, I'm telling you that what is they idolatry or idolatry of the heart? It's not as obvious, it's not as visual, visual, but it's just as light and death serious as it was in biblical times. And any time you read about idol worship in the Bible and what God's thoughts was on it, when it comes to modern day idolatry, things that we have inside of us, God takes the same thought. There is no excuse because people don't physically see you doing it. It's not obvious. doesn't mean it's less important. And that's exactly what God would like us to address today. In fact, the first commandment addresses the very issue. The text from Exodus, Thou shalt have no other good before me. That's pretty clear. And Jesus talks about the first commandment in 12.30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. It's the same thing, really. Because you cannot be loving God with your whole being, your whole heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and be loving an idol. The two purposes cannot exist. Our God most certainly says no. So, as a Christian, what has this got to do with me? I'm born again. I'm saved. I live in the best way I can. Yet God has told me to tell you today it's time to look for any hidden idols. Things that may have started of harmless, but they've risen to such an importance in their life that you put them before God. And it's rivaling Him. So, I compiled four questions for the young people, four questions for the older people, four questions for anyone that can hear me that help us to discern and start to think, do we have any hidden idols or things that we're holding up there 